Uh, thank you very much, and thanks, for, thanks very much for hosting me and uh, for such a fabulous event. Uh, despite what it says on the screen, I'm not Daryl Edwards, the uh, Chief Executive Officer of Bowen Coke and Coal. Daryl is here. Daryl, put your hand up somewhere. Don't tell me he's abandoned me. He's up the back there, and Jen as well. So come and see him in the booth. Uh, if I skip any detail, uh, he will be able to fill you in on all of that. We actually flipped a coin to see who would come up here, and uh, I, uh, I lost. Um, but um, it was Daryl's coin, so I'm just not sure how many heads he had on that one, Daryl, but never mind. Um, so, look, I want to um, sort of introduce you to the Bowen Coke and Coal story. Um, I'll talk through some of the recent highlights, but maybe taking a step back, um, you know, less than two years ago, we closed the acquisition of the Burton Mine uh, from uh, New Hope. So New Hope had acquired it from Peabody. Um, and they also sort of ended us the Lenten project as well. So it's quite a big complex. Historically, it was a very uh, successful coke and coal mine. Um, so within the last two years, uh, we opened the mine up. Um, we, we, uh, we, got, um, uh, we had an official opening just probably earlier than this time last year. Uh, and since then, we've mined around uh, 2 million tonnes of ROM coal. So it's been a pretty rapid start-up. Um, it hasn't been without its challenges, I can tell you. We, um, we had uh, floods of a biblical proportion. Um, we had the, uh, the tail end of a plague, otherwise known as COVID-19. Um, and we also had a swarm of locusts coming down from George Street in, uh, in uh, Brisbane uh, and imposing on us the highest royalty regime in the world. Uh, we're from the government, we're here to help. Um, so, look, but despite those um, uh, significant challenges, we've sort of persevered. Uh, last year was a reasonably tough year. Daryl had a full head of hair at the start of that year, I think, and he's now looks like Kojak. Um, so, um, we are, uh, we're, we're persevering, that's what we do, I guess. We just, uh, we, you know, we're big fans of coal, we're big fans of Met Coal. I think we're the only Met Coal producer uh, on the uh, on the schedule today. Um, so last quarter was a big quarter. This quarter will probably be a bigger one, uh, and it was big in the sense that we sort of had record production out of Burton. Uh, we also made our maiden uh, EBITDA a positive number, $11 million, which we're very proud of, and that was after paying uh, over $19 million to the state for their for their royalties under their generous regime. Um, so uh, that's all sort of heading in the, in the right direction. I think uh, we, we're, when I say we're heading for steady state from sort of uh, next quarter onwards, we'll be at steady state and, and our costs will come down significantly. So I'll talk through that. But uh, cost here at $182 per tonne Aussies on the boat um, is within our guidance uh, and, and down on the previous quarter. Uh, but our long term goal, when I say long term, for all of next financial year, we're targeting um, 135 to 145 Aussies. And that sounds like a decent um, cut, but it's actually just basically geometry and maths. And so as our strip ratio reduces, we have to shift less. Uh, overburden to mine the same amount of coal, and that's what drives the economics of the mining costs. Um, as well as that, last, um, uh, last quarter we locked in forward sales with a bunch of very um, large steel companies, some of the biggest steel companies in the world. So all our met coal for next year, being from sort of April to March, their Japanese um, buying year is, uh, is locked in now uh, and forward sold or sold um, to, uh, to the very largest steel mills in the world. We also improved our sales mix, so uh, I'll come back to that, but we've, we're sort of, as we ramp up, we're getting into more met coal, uh, less thermal. So this is an overview of the complex um, uh, that we acquired. You'll see some of the other mines around. We're in the heart of coal country in the northern Bowen Basin, so we've got Peabody, we've got Stanmore, uh, which was a company myself and another couple of mates started in, uh, in uh, 2008 and listed. Um, uh, Fitzroy, uh, BHP, Mitsubishi, so some of the biggest miners and some of the biggest mines uh, in Queensland are our neighbours. Um, the Burton mine uh, is uh, located there as you can see it and uh, I think important to note that um, these are the pits we're mining at the moment, Ellensfield South and we're going to head into Plumtree North shortly. We've also been mining, this was our starter pit down here at Broadmeadow East, so as well as buying 
the Burton Complex in Lenton uh, from New Hope, we bought uh, Broadmeadow East from Peabody. So uh, we sort of threaded that together. And there are shades there, I guess, of what we did at Stanmore with Isaac Plains. We bought Isaac Plains uh, from Bale and Sumitomo, and we bought from Peabody the adjacent pit. So one of them had all coal, and one of them had the 300 million bucks worth of infrastructure, um, drag line, wash plant, all the rest. So this is not a dissimilar deal. Uh, we threaded together a few things. Um, this also comes with at least 300, probably 400 million bucks of infrastructure today. You know, wash plant, um, you know, Hall Road uh, offices, um, a fantastic camp, 350 person camp. Um, basically, everything we need to run a very major uh, coal mining operation. Um, and we, we bought it for about 10% of that number. Um, so uh, we, we also have picked up a number of other assets. Um, uh, and we're looking to run the sort of hub and spoke model, basically. So that, that centralised infrastructure uh, here uh, will service not only the assets such as the ones we're mining now, but then there's others that will come on through, uh, like Lenton uh, and Hillalong, which we're drilling up further north at the moment. So this is zoom into the pit that our, our current focus is, is the main uh, driver of our uh, operations at the moment, is the Ellensfield South Pit. Um, yeah, so you can see here, this is the, the Leichhardt seam we're mining here, um, the Vermont seam underneath it, and it's a terrace mine. So we start at this end and we run through to there. At the end of this here, uh, where, the, where the sort of clearing is completed, that's where we've got to jump the creek and that's where we run to Plum Tree North. So once we run into Plum Tree North, we've got about another six, six to seven years of mining there. All of this is at um, an average of seven to one strip ratio. So very low cost mining as we get uh, into our steady state. In fact, the um, the remaining mine life on this particular pit, Ellensfield, before we jump that creek, uh, will run through to June next year, and that's got a st remaining strip ratio of five to one, so incredibly low, low strip ratio, low cost. So I think I slipped, skipped a slide, um, but um, that was the Broad, uh, Broad Meadow East pit, which. Um, uh, which was our starter pit we bought from Peabody. That's been very good to us. Um, we've now parked that because we filled the first module of the wash plant with Ellensfield and that was the goal, is to get it all out of one pit, one, one mining invoice, minimised cost. It's very close to the, uh, to the wash plant um, and it basically um, can keep us going at that sort of roughly two million tonnes of product uh, a year, which is our, our starting point. We can double that production. Um, uh, and, uh, and we can spend a little bit of money on the wash plant to refurbish the second module, which we will do at some point in time. But at the moment, we're just focused on getting in a steady state and spitting out that cash. Overall, it's about a five and a half million tonne. It's, it's really a six million tonne operation. It's run, it's run for full years at six million tonnes, uh, the wash plant in the past. Um, so our capacity... Um, uh, availability, so this is a measure of how, uh, whether the wash plant's running well and, and is available uh, or is down, so 94% extremely high. Utilisation 73, but in April I think we're up to 87 already, so it's heading in the right direction. So utilisation just means we haven't had the coal to feed it as we get towards steady state, but that's certainly sort of settling down now. Um, just a couple of... Uh, Trend lines here, so you can see uh, the September, December and March quarters. You can see what's happened in the Burton complex with the uh, rom coal, the dark blue line, uh, dark blue bar increasing. The second of those two sets of bars, the grey and light blue bar, demonstrates the product coal. Um, and uh, what you'll see there is that the product mix is switching, so more light blue, more, more met coal. As I say, we're about 57% in the last quarter. We'll be uh, our target 60 and we think we'll get there, there pretty soon. The second chart below that is our EBITDA performance. So we've gone from, from negatives as, as we've sort of been uh, starting up and ramping up uh, and, and slight negative in the December quarter and now we're into positive territory. So I think, and what really drives that number now um, is, is the strip ratio. That's what it is. I mean, the mining costs, are what they are to shift the dirt. Um, and so the less dirt we can shift for a tonne of coal, the better. Um, and at the moment, we're still sitting up at around sort of nines and tens, but that will come down to sort of sevens, and that will drop, you know, a significant amount, proportionate amount out of our mining costs. 
Um, so we did put some guidance out, which is probably unusual for a, for a company uh, in startup phase, uh, but largely we've managed to hit it. We're a little bit above on, on CapEx, um, but we're a little bit at the lower end of the, uh, the cash cost. So that 175 to 195 cash cost, I mean, that's, that's competitive in the basin. I mean, if you look at, um, uh, you know, our peers, as I say, I think BHP, the last six months was 193 Aussies, um, you know, Peabody and uh, Coronado, similar or higher numbers. Um, but the important thing is here, as we get to steady state, our costs will come down and they are coming down. So we'll see 135 to 145 for next financial year from, from sort of 1 July on average. Um, production guidance, we're, we're meeting and we're comfortable with that. Um, and yeah, I'll target out that first module around that sort of 2.6 million tonnes of, of ROM um, and up at about 1.8 million tonnes of product. That's the wash plant, so the, the end of it closest to you, the lights are on, that's the half that we, we refurbished at the back end. We've stripped it all out, it's ready to go, it's only another, Daryl will correct me, but circa $30 million um, to get that going and double the, the capacity. Um, so that is, um, it's a 5.5, 6 million tonne uh, per annum plant, ROM, ROM feed, uh, which will spit out, you know, close enough to 4 million tonnes. So we're doing half of that at the moment, first module, and, and we don't have any immediate plans to expand it, but we will pending the market and what the market uh, dictates. As we, you know, come back and uh, strengthen our balance sheet as well, I think is important. So. Um, Life of mine, about 14 years on those initial pits, um, Burton, Lenton, BME. Uh, there's more than that in the other ones. I'll demonstrate that shortly. Um, but even the reserves we've defined to date, there's, there's 14 years of mine life at that sort of single module current run rate, um, which, is, which is quite significant. So this just gives you another perspective. So we're, we broad meadow east, we've just parked at the moment. Um, we're, and, and we'll come back to that. Uh, but we've, we can fill the wash plant out of Ellensfield South. So that is absolutely what we're doing at the moment. Um, as I say, through to the end of 25 when Ellensfield South uh, comes to an end, that between now and then we've done the heavy lifting. So it's an average of seven to one strip ratio. But what's remaining is five to one. So we've shifted more dirt um, as we've got it started and you know, overburdened in advance. Uh, and then we skip into Plum Tree North, which again, seven to one strip ratio, great stuff, and so is Lenton. So we're out to 2030 and then beyond, uh, still at that sort of that strip ratio. Then the, the other stuff, Burton North is an old pit, Burton South is an old pit, which we think we can take another cut or two out of them. They're extremely high quality coke and coal. These were 12 metre seams, 80% yield, um, fantastic metallurgical coal, really um, you know, very well uh, desired around the, around the steel mills around the world. Um, and so we'll come back to those. They're higher strip ratio, so they're at the end, but I think, I mean, come back to supply and demand, but price in my head is only going one way longer term, um, just because we're not really building any more of these things and the demand continues to go up. So in terms of that, um, we are seeing forecasts of a sig significant structural uh, shortfall in Met Coal uh, coming by, uh, by 2040. It's, it's tight as a drum at the moment. You're seeing heading to the second half of this year forecasts, so it'll jump back up again to sort of 290 US. Um, you know, I remember when we started Stanmore Coal the first time, like within uh, months of that, the price hit 300 US and it stayed there for about a millisecond and then sort of came back down again. And, and this was a time when, you know, if you got, um, you know, 50 or 60 bucks historically, you're doing quite well. Now that price has sat up, you know, at or around that 250, 300 for, for the last few years. Um, and and that, that sort of recognises both that costs have sort of structurally shifted um, in the basin, um, but also just that, that that demand continues to grow and we're just not making any more of this stuff and we're certainly not developing any more projects. So I think this, I mean, I'm invested in a bunch of different commodities. We've got Ballymore tomorrow afternoon at 3.30. They're, they're going really well, gold, copper. But I think, um, uh, I think Met Coal has some particular characteristics. Because it's kind of on the nose from an ESG point of view, nobody will invest in it. You can't get finance, you can't get insurance. But for those of us that are willing to go through that pain and actually get it done, it's a fantastic market to be in. And, and I'd also point out that you can't build a steel. We need to uh, support our industry, support our communities, you know, industrialise third world nations and frankly decarbonise um, without Met Coal. So it's um, quite an opportunity. I won't talk too much about that. I just want to point out one other thing, which is this is broad general coal. Um, you know, I think it, it, within sort of five k's of this room, people probably overall the view that coal is dead. Um, you know, coal's uh, you know yesterday's uh, fuel. Well, a couple of small facts, but 82% of our global energy, that's all energy, including not just uh, electricity, is from coal, oil and gas. 
fossil fuels. Um, you know, at the top of this chart, you've got a few countries like America and Europe sort of um, battling each other to um, sort of, in my opinion, destroy their economies and uh, decarbonise as quickly as they can. But it doesn't really matter. It's a rounding area. You've got 70% um, of coal market is, is India and China. That's what they're doing. You can see the blue chart there. So um, that's just the reality of life for us. I won't dwell on this. We just put another director on, Malte. He's a lovely German bloke, actually taller than me, as it turns out. So, um, and, uh, yeah. uh, and so, yeah, look, just in summary, we are, we are becoming a low-cost producer. We'll be around for a long time. We are active. We're acquisitive, you know, at the right time. We're now rebuilding from last year's kind of series of setbacks, but we're, we're doing really well. And, and the team, led by Daryl and, and Jen at the back, are doing a fantastic job. So we think the Met Coal market is extremely positive and buoyant, not just in the short term, but in the long term. We're talking to our fellow coal companies about coming together and actually telling the story of coal. We'll, you'll hear more about that before long, a new uh, organisation coming through. We've got a great team, great set of assets, strong partners, Sumitomo um, and, uh, and um, uh, Formosa in Taiwan at an asset level. So, yeah, exciting stuff. Just come and see us, drop in and, uh, and say good day, and we'll take you through a bit more of the detail. Thank you.